Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Usna Zulkifli. So we are from group 6A. Uh, we will uh, 6A. We will present on the case review on the case of Muhammad Juzaili, Muhammad Kamis against uh, and others against state government of Negeri Sembilan and others. So we are consisting on uh, five member, which is uh, me myself, Nurul Husna, uh, Ainur Shamimi, Nur Izzat, Aina Siti, Nur Amani, and also Farah Inshira. So. Uh, the information uh, we move to the information of the case so we know that uh, this case is uh, an appeal case at the court of appeal of uh, court of appeal from the judgment of the high court of uh, seremban uh, the appellant in this case consists of three person which is first is muhammad juzaili second is uh, shuko benjani and third is one firol bin one ismail and the respondent consists of uh, five uh, five institutions from the government side. So we move to the fact of the case. Uh, in this case, we know that uh, uh, it is an appeal case on the judgment of the High Court of Seremban, uh, Negeri Sembilan on uh, 11 October 2012 in dismissing the appeal of the judicial review made by the appellant. So in this case, uh, the three appellants had been charged uh, uh, on the section 66 of the Sharia Criminal Enactment, uh, Negeri Sembilan, uh, 1992 for expressing uh, 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 for expressing like a woman by wearing a feminine clothes and they also uh, they had been charged for several time under the section 60c and due to this they had applied for the uh, appeal to the high court of uh, seremban uh, to to uh, and argue that uh, the section 60c of the sharia criminal enactment had infringed their right under Article 5, 8, uh, 9, and also 10 of the Federal Constitution. So uh, we move to the next uh, slide, of which is on the procedural history. As mentioned earlier, uh, it is an appeal case uh, at the uh, Court of Appeal uh, for uh, the dis uh, dismiss for the judgment by the High Court of Seremban in dismissing their claim that uh, Section 66 of the Sharia Criminal Enactment Negeri Sembilan 1992 uh, is void due to the uh, due to the contrary with the article uh, article as mentioned earlier, which is Article 5, 8, 9, and also 10 of the Federal Constitution. So we move to the judgment. For the judgment, the Putrajaya Court of Appeal heard by three honorable judges held allowing the appeal that section 66 of the enactment is void as it is unconstitutional and inconsistent with the article 5, 8, 2, uh, 9, and 10 of the federal constitution. The learned judge also granted the declaration sought by the appeal in prayer B1 of the judicial review application, but in with the terms that section 66 of the enactment is inconsistent with article 5, 8, 9, and 10 and is therefore void. It was further held that each party will bear their own costs since the appeals council did not ask for costs. <clears throat> for the issue, there will be six issue appear in this case. The first is whether section 66 of the enactment is in breach of article 5, clause 1 of the federal constitution. The second issue is whether section 66 contravenes article 81 of the federal constitution. The third issue is whether section 66 Contravenes Article 8, Section uh, Clause 2 of the Constitution. The fourth issue is whether Section 66 is, is inconsistent with Article 9, Clause 2 of the Constitution. Section 5 is whether Issue 5 is whether Section 66 of the Enactment is in breach of Article 10, Clause 2 of the Constitution. And the sixth issue is whether the Male Muslim Gender Identity Disorder (GID) suffers are persons of unsound mind. So it was held that Section 66 is incompatible with the existence of the mental GID, uh, mental disease GID, and also held that Section 66 ignored the GID sufferers. 66 discriminates genders, and it is also a state law, hence it has no power to restrict the freedom of uh, speech and movement, and also expression. Um, next slide, please. 
Okay, so on to the rationale. The GID, according to the medical evidence, is something that is inherent to the appellant's nature and hence their abnormal condition is incurable. Next slide, please. So according to the sociologist evidence, it was held that uh, it was held uh, by the professor Teh Yit Kun that uh, Section 66 has adverse effect against the transsexuals and Malaysian society. And on the appellant's evidence, it was established that they did not choose and they cannot change from being the GID sufferers and hence Section 66 is harmful to them. Next slide. Okay, so on the legislative competence of the state legislature, it was held that Article 74 Clause 2 is actually, uh, even though uh, even though allows legis to be legislate matters on Islamic religion, it is actually have, uh, must comply with the conditions or restrictions imposed by the federal constitution. And on the position of the Islam and the federal constitution, despite Article 3, 3 Clause 1 of the federal constitution, in the case of Che Omar bin Che, so it was held that uh, for the meaning and position of Islam, it must be traced back to the history of Malaysia of Islam after the British intervention. Next slide, please. And on the inconsistencies with the federal constitution, Article 4, Clause 2 of the federal constitution held that the federal constitution will be a supreme law, and hence anything that is against any provisions under the federal constitution will be considered as void. So on the Mufti's opinion, according to Mufti, even it is one of the Islamic precepts that a male Muslim is prohibited from dressing up as a woman. However, the core issue here is not on uh, complying with the precepts. However, it is on the uh, session 66 and complying with the federal constitution. And hence, Mufti has failed to address the right issue. Next slide. So whether section 66 is in breach of article five, uh, it was held that article five uh, guarantees no person be, will be deprived of his life and personal liberty. However, in this case, Section 66 uh, is inconsistent with Article 5 as it deprives the GID sufferers and also the appellant to live with dignity and be treated as an equal citizens to the nation. Next slide, please. Whether Section 66 is in breach of Article 8. So Article 8 provides equality before the law and equal protection of the law. However, Section 66 provides an equal treatment However, uh, while the GID sufferers is in different condition, different situation from the normal male Muslims. And hence, Section 66 uh, doesn't give an equal treatment to the GID sufferers. Next slide, please. So whether Section 66 is in breach of Article 8, Clause 2. Article 8, Clause 2 provides that there shall be no discrimination against the citizens on the ground of gender. However, Section 66 only state on the male part that they cannot pose as a woman. However, women can pose as a man in public. So the court find that this is an unfavorable bias. Uh, for the issue of whether Section 66 is in breach of Article 9, Clause 2, the federal constitution guarantees the freedom of movement in the federation. However, the Section 66 causes an unreasonable restriction towards the appellant's right to freedom of movement. And hence, it was held unconstitutional. Next slide, please. Okay, so section 66, whether it is in breach of Article 10, Clause 2. Article 10, Clause 2 guarantees the right to freedom of speech. However, section 66 is a state law that criminalizes uh, male Muslims from wearing women's attire or poses as women in public. So the court found that it is, this is unconstitutional because it restricts the R, uh, freedom of speech and expression. Not to mention that it is also a law not made by the parliament. And finally, whether Section 66, uh, whether male Muslim sufferers are considered as a person of unsound mind. So it was held that in the absence of sufficient medical evidence on the uh, GID sufferers, the court decided that it is absurd to suggest that the appellants are person of unsound mind. So in conclusion, the rationale behind the court holding in this case is that Section 66 is invalid because it is unconstitutional. So it is because it is in contrast with Article 5, 8, 9, and 10 of the Federal Constitution. So the court allowed the appeal and also granted the appellants for a declaration over the inconsistency of Section 66. So uh, for the dicta, it was decided that there, there is no dicta given in this case. Next. Uh, for dissent, there is no dissenting judgment as 
all the judges had agreed to similar judgment that section 66 is invalid as it inconsistent with article 5 plus 1, article 8 plus 1 and 2, article 9 plus 2 and article 10 plus 1 plus A. For parties' arguments, uh, for the first issue, the appellant's counsel submitted that section 66 violate the appellant's right to live with dignity, which is also guaranteed by Article 5 plus 1. Mr. Speaker's learned counsel submitted that section 66 is in contrast with the existence of the appellant, and all, all other GID sufferers by which this is pursuant to the effect from the section 66 being enforced where it creates insecurity into the life of the appellants and other Muslim male persons that suffer GID. For the second issue, the appellants argue that section 66 of the enactment contravenes Article 8, Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution. So the appellant alleges that even though section 66 provides for equal treatment for all Muslims, the appellants GID sufferer are not the same as the other Muslim male, that they must be differently placed and treated, since there is a fatal omission from the part of the legislature in not providing exception for the person that suffer GID under section 66. This important section is submitted to be discriminatory. For the third issue, the appellant's counsel submitted that section 66 is uh, contrary with Article 8, Clause 2 of the Federal Constitution, for only prohibit the male Muslim but not female from cross dressing. Thus, according to the appellant, this important section is biased toward Muslim people, Muslim female person that render it discriminatory on the ground of gender. For the fourth issue, the appellant submitted that section 66 is contrary to Article 9, Clause 2 of the Federal Constitution on the ground that the impartment section's effect is it denies the appellants and sufferers of the GID's right to move freely in public places as they cannot be able to go out from their home freely without being exposed to being arrested for cross-dressing and be sanctioned under section 66. For the fifth issues, the appellant alleged that this issue is to be answered in positive uh, on three grounds in Ta'alia, a person dress and attire are a form of expression which is guaranteed under Article 10 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution and Section 66 meanwhile directly denied the appellant's right to freedom of expression by prohibiting them from wearing attire or dress that choose to wear. For the sixth uh, issue, the learned state legal advisor of Negeri Sembilan or the respondent argued that Section 66 is not prejudicial to the appellant since they are person of unsound mind and therefore entitled to use the defence and uh, entrenched under Section 11 of the Sharia Criminal Enactment 1992 in Greece, England, where its wording are perimeter to Section 84 of the Penal Code, by which the appellant will be excluded from being convicted of this offence under Section 66. Uh, this is our comment. In our opinion, we are in position to disagree with what the three honourable judges hold that this Section 66 is unconstitutional on the ground that it is inconsistent with the state articles above. This is because we are in opinion that the crux of all these issues being raised in this case is the GID illness that suffered by the appellants and not the absence of the Section 66 provision. Therefore, we are in view that the thing that needs to be concerned on is the illness and not the law. That is why, accordingly, we are in view that it is unreasonable to diminish Section 66 where the crux of the problem is the illness. This case will open a floodgate where people commit crimes, justifying their criminal act by saying that they are ill and put all the blame towards the law that prohibit the crime. Therefore, it is fair to conclude that it is unreasonable act to declare a law to be invalid just because it is committed by an ill person. Accordingly, as an alternative, even if GID is truly an illness to be more fair towards the sufferer, maybe it is better if the Sharia court is allowed expressly by law to use this illness as mitigation factor in order to reduce the punishment of the person suffered with this GID. Or it is suggested for the state legislature to regulate a provision or law regarding the exception for the person that suffered any uncured psychological illness to be excluded from being punished. At the very least, it can preserve the sanctity of Islam by punishing the convicted person that suffered no illness for posing as a woman uh, in public while preserving the right of, the, of this GID sufferer. That's all from us. Thank you.